The internet and the information it connects us to is a resource that almost everyone has come to depend on. Facts that once might have taken several days to locate in a research <laughs> library can now be obtained instantaneously using your personal computer or even your handheld devices. Mm -hmm, that's right. The online threats posed by hackers and other security holes are enough to make you want to hide under your desk or find the nearest fallout shelter, but it turns out that's not necessary. Thank goodness. And joining us now to tell us more about how you can safeguard your devices is tech expert Nika Allen. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, hello. Good to see you, Nika. Good so, to see you. So, you know, it, it seems like something that that would be common sense in this day and age, but there's still a lot of people that don't understand how important it is to protect yourself online. They don't think the threat can happen to them, but it can happen to anyone that's online. It can really happen to anyone. I mean, you don't really think about how much of your life you just put out there yeah. for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. um, and there can be some big major consequences to mm -hmm. leaving out too much information, uh, such as identity theft, mm -hmm. Um, kind of just some general privacy issues that could actually affect you later in life, possibly yeah. getting a job, mm -hmm. or even people have been known to have their houses broken into because they put too much information online. I'm going on vacation. My right. house will be unlocked. So exactly. Do you have any tips to help us online just in general? Yes, definitely. Um, it's really important to secure all of your devices and your Wi-Fi connection mm -hmm. with okay. a very strong password. And we'll talk about what makes a strong password Usually people know, but not always. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, also, not don't click on just anything that you see on the internet or anything that pops up. You want a million dollars. Exactly. Uh -huh. Some of that stuff is just meant to scam and you know to put in information that you don't really want to give out. Right. Um, also, it's important to keep your, uh, your devices clean with okay. antivirus software. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So is there, Those just just quickly before we get into the passwords, because we're going to talk about what makes a strong one and, you know, um, are, are there like antivirus things for our iPads and our, our iPhones? Because, you know, I think of it, and I'm, I'm a Mac user, so when I switched over to Mac, a lot of times I don't think about like antivirus software, because mm -hmm. the whole thing is like, oh, it's Mac, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily the case, it's but is there something that I can do on my iPhone or my iPad to protect it? Um, you know, not using... Wi-Fi connections that are random all the time, being careful okay. of the Wi-Fi connections so that people can't put stuff on. Apple's pretty uh -huh. good about keeping up to date with their software and just making sure that you actually, I like to leave my software updates um, open so that they can just, so like, just update by itself it. so that Apple can help you with keep your oh, device clean. Gotcha. Okay. okay. See, it's not just a brand preference. They actually are doing good stuff. Anyway, <laughs> doing all right. So um, let's talk about these um, in terms of making strong passwords yeah. that are easy to remember because that's the hard thing for me because yeah. my web key, for example, on my, my wireless at home, there's no way in the world that I could remember it. I know. Some so, of them are crazy. So what can we do, Nika? Um, well, here's an example of a bad password, actually. So using something too easy, kind of like your first name, the year, or your birthday, uh -huh. maybe your mother's name, something that can be probably found online, mm -hmm. yeah. um, don't use something like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's really important to use something. Gotta change my password. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh -oh. One, two, three, four, five. You, but honestly, you would be surprised at how many people, I think the most common password right now is one, two, three, four, five, six. And people wow. are just using that because like, oh, I don't really care. It's, I don't have any, any real important information on right. here. But you don't think about what you actually do have. It's, right. it's kind of crazy. Can you give us an example of a strong password? Yes, so a strong password Whoa. has yeah, a minimum of eight characters uses uh, special symbols, numbers, and random capitalization. Well, great. Why are we sharing so, Chad's password? <laughs> <laughs> and you can see this Red is a, panda. this is kind of easier to remember because it's based on a word. It's right. You can see it's Red Panda. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's something you might be able to remember, but numbers and symbols have replaced some of the actual letters uh -huh. um, to make it a little easier for you to remember. Very That's sneaky. really smart. Yeah. So wow, what great. about social media? Specifically so, social media. Specifically social media. Well, so as I was saying, a lot of uh, your personal information is up there. Of course, mm -hmm. people's birthdays, people are putting their addresses, tons of different things. Um, but it's important to really probably not put that stuff up there. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, when you have a bank question or something, oh, they yeah. ask you, what are some of the common security questions that you see? Right. What yeah. is your birthday? What's your mother's maiden name? Where were you born? Things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're actually opening up on your social media. Yeah. So you have to gotcha. really be careful of that. So when you're putting stuff there, because you know a lot of folks on their Facebook pages, they'll put their, their birth town, you know, things like that. We should omit that. Not necessarily something that we need to have on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, it's not necessarily something that you need to have up there. 
Um, but yeah, people don't really think about everything. And once you put a picture up there, mm -hmm. it's almost not really yours anymore. It's really hard to take stuff down off the internet. Mm -hmm. Pictures, well, it's comments. On the internet, it's there forever. So anything Ugh. that you put up the internet, you have to really be saying, you know, I'm committed to keeping this up there <laughs> and, you know, giving everyone else the potential of grabbing onto it. Right. Because uh, so even if important. you remove it from your Facebook page, that URL, st the, the web address still exists. Or yeah. somebody so, could screenshot it. Yeah, I mean, someone could. It's so easy to just click and download a picture from right. Facebook nowadays. Right. I mean, literally, you just click and then press download. They right. make it super easy for you to do. Right. And so any picture that you have up there for even five minutes, you know, can be taken. And we know how fast, you know, things can move no, nowadays. Things can be, become yeah. popular. Yeah, and so what if that happened to one of your images? That, <laughs> that might not be so oh, fun. terrifying. Yeah, exactly. no, I've got a lot of stuff to look at. All right. Yeah. Well, Mika, thank you so much thank for you. all the information. And Definitely. of course, we'll see you next week for more tech tips. And if you want a recap on what we were just talking about here, head over to Casa.com and click on the Style tab.